Stafu. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see everyone. Uh, and I was trying to say, maybe we're getting more people from around the world because we're doing this earlier than we usually do. So it's nice to see you. Make sure you say hello, say where you're from. Um, and we'll get started right now. It's so good to be here with Chibi Tronics. Um, I have a long history with Chibi and so does Jay. And it's very fun to have all our new, uh, all our paths cross in so many different ways. And it's lovely to meet Fanny that is new to me, but I love everyone. So everyone, just some housekeeping real quick. Make sure your sound's on. If you switch it to gallery view, you can see all our faces. That's up in the corner. There's also a speaker view. Um, And then make sure you mingle and share in the chat because that's what makes this really fun. And um, also make sure you post questions in the chat. You can use the Q&A feature or the the other if you want. And I'm going to open our little slideshow. And is is someone from Den Haag? Is that what I read in the chat? Yeah. Oh, nice. I have been there. I went in the middle of the night once. It's a long story, so I'll tell it in the chat later. All right. So it's good to see you. Uh, Before we totally get started, Susan and I wanted to tell you about Infosys Pathfinders. Susan, I want you to do it. (laughs) Sure. Um, Infosys Pathfinders is an awesome opportunity for teachers in the United States. where you can apply to, uh, um, a, a, um, I think there are like 16 different provi- uh, PD providers this, this uh, session, mm-hmm. um, which as you see is in February the 12th through the 15th. It's pretty intensive. Um, if, you, um, if you go, uh, they are associated, or they work a lot with um, donors choose, and, and a lot of, so you apply to donors choose to get half the funding. The other, the other funding comes through emphasis um, and it's all online this year. Usually, um, or last year we met in, uh, for the winter, we met in Providence, Rhode Island. So we had people fly in from Hawaii all over the United States. Um, we're not flying this time. Um, we did a summer version of Pathfinders and it was intense. And um, we sent out all kinds of good goodies to teachers. And then we, um, and, and I know Colleen is gonna be there too, right Colleen? Um, right. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, uh, put them in the chat. Um, it's a great opportunity to um, do a lot of good maker uh, and uh, computer science kind of things. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Colleen. I was scanning the link. Um, I have I had to open up my second computer to type links. So yeah, we're doing a, Tom and I are going to do a three-day workshop um, and it will be all of our makey makey uh, from the at home blended with Tom's in-person workshop that he does. So it's going to be pretty awesome. All right, and, well, and Chibi Tronics is doing one too. I'll be there with same same time, same place yeah. ish. And Co- and Code Joy is doing one. That's the yeah. people from um, the Hummingbird Robotics, and there's some Make Code ones. There's all kinds of stuff. But we're taking we're yeah. telling you check it out to do our <laughs> <laughs> do one of our sessions. No, I'm just kidding. Do any of the sessions. Uh, we're here today to talk about social emotional learning. Uh, because it's kind of important. Oh, I see. I've put myself on twice and you can see me twice. Sorry, guys. I'm bad at, I'm bad at double tasking. All right. So you can, um, you can find out a little bit. We're going to find them more about social emotional learning. And I just made this quick PDF to kind of talk about how, uh, the four C's and talk about empathy. And I'm going to share this in the chat, but I, I just wanted to throw this up there as the, uh, intro to social emotional learning. And Susan, I think you were gonna talk about Maslow before Bloom, right? Yeah, I'm not an expert on Maslow, but I know that there is definitely a, um, a hierarchy of needs starting with um, eating and sleeping and being safe. And um, it's, that is an, an incredibly important part before we even start talking about what goes on, what we would like to start in the classroom. Um, and it's something that we can't necessarily 
uh, we as teachers can't necessarily impact, but we must be aware of what's going on to some, some way, somehow, um, for all of our little ones in our classroom. Um, I know they're not all little, but um, inside we all can feel little at any time. So um, yeah, that's a, an awareness thing. Click on the link, it's really, really good. Um, yeah. Oh, it's a nice check in throughout the day, checking in on our students. And I think that's really more important now than ever before with, um, with COVID and having kids at home and um, some kids at school and everyone kind of doing back and forth things. It can be, uh, it can be very stressful for our kids, right? I mean, there's a lot going on. So this is even more important than, than all the other times. I'm going to share the link because instead of sharing the video, it'll, it'll kind of get laggy on us. Right. And I, I did want to um, say that we all were talking last week about um, all of these things. And we, we really had this emphasis on process before product which I think is really important because um, if we if we start there, right? If that's the one thing you do as a teacher is realize that the process is more important than the product at the end, you're already going to be using social emotional learning in your classroom because you're helping that kid through the process of creating whatever they're creating and putting that emphasis first. Yep, and the more we put attention on the process, the process gets reified and you can see the invisible parts that you were doing all along and those actually become a product and that's why it's so important. Nice. Uh, and we also uh, were talking about failure before success because a lot of us, I think we were, were we talking about how many mistakes that we make and how when we make those mistakes, like a lot of times our students don't see that. That's that's something that we have to be open to share, sharing. I, I just want to mention something here, Colleen, the failure before success is a huge uh, piece for all of us, but I want to talk about the gifted kids. They don't feel like they should fail. Mm -hmm. And it's important for them to know that it's okay to fail, that it's, it's part of the, it's part of the process. It's part of, it's part of life. And for us to give them, I mean, if they are hearing that they're smart all the time and they think that they can't fail, that is, um, that, is that doesn't lead to success at all. Mm -hmm. and, and then vulnerability before strength. Who wanted to talk about that? Oh, I can go ahead so I can continue. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess, again, it's, uh, it's pretty much related to the other, the other points is that, again, we need to have the courage to show that we too are vulnerable and we all need to be able to share the process and sh express ourselves, express our feelings as we go, uh, rather than just always focus on what we are good at or not good at. So... Yeah, vulnerability is like we, we don't always have to be strong and great and competent. So can go ahead and uh, continue with the next slide if you want. Yeah. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, Danny. To kind That's of funny because I was about I was about to say like that was a great way to say who you are because we yeah. just opened ourselves up to vulnerability and we haven't even introduced ourselves. We did that because um, that's part of this whole learning process. Um, so just Absolutely. a reminder to, to users, um, someone's telling me I can't, can't post uh, links. They can't copy them in the chat. You should be able to copy and paste them. I actually can't put questions in as the, as the host. So, um, but I wanted to say that if you wanna move your, your speakers around, you can move those bubbles in case you haven't. So, Fanny, it's very nice to introduce you to everyone. You're from No Borders Learning, and um, I'm really happy to, to be new friends. So can you tell us a little bit more about Likewise. you? Yes, so I'm Fanny Passport, and I'm French, and maybe you can hear it. <laughs> I'm an invitational educator. I believe that everyone is able, valuable, and possesses untapped potential for learning. And I, I love working with students, but also adults and I support schools in co-constructing healthy learning ecosystems. So it's kind of combining this wellness, well-being, and deep learning with kind of three areas of attending to the heart, building relationships, sense of belonging, exercising the mind is how we, can we make our students feel they can. 
and engage the willpower so that they can be autonomous learners, not independent, but autonomous learners who endorse the action that they engage in. I wanted to share with you this link here because on Sunday, I'm starting a four week online course exactly on my core um, core idea of No Borders Learning, which is co-constructing learning ecosystems. And I'm looking for a few more daring, uh, courageous, curious PK-12 teachers. So we'd love to have you there. And thank you for inviting me. I'm grateful to be joining you today. Nice. And the Chibitronics team. Uh, I'll get started. So hi, everybody. And so happy to hang out with you guys over at Joy Labs. Um, thanks for having us here. And uh, so I'm G and I'm a co-founder of Chibitronics. And basically we make tools for blending paper craft with electronics. Um, so our core thing is this, I don't know if you guys can see very well, but it's this uh, a sticker that glows when you add power to it. And then because it's on paper, you can be all sorts of artsy and, and crafty. Um, and so, yeah, that's us. And we're huge believers in like, it's not about the, the technology and the technique. It's about, you know, what do you do with it? How does it open up your imagination and help you be, you know, a, a better version of yourself and make a better world? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a great introduction, G. Chibitronics actually is along inside my heart with Makey Makey because I think I bought them both around the same time. And so I had these two products that really helped me value process over product actually, because both of these kits made me do things I didn't know I could do. So I remember um, just being in my library and I was working with kids and they were doing amazing things. It was really awesome when we were learning next to each other and finding those things out. And then I remember one day, uh, I guess I got ahead of the kids and I did this whole like star inspired illustrated words and I use co the conductive tape to write words. Um, I actually use the, bo the booster tape that we have that's conductive fabric tape, which is what y'all are using in your elbow patches now. Um, I'd use that tape to like do a cursive word and have this most beautiful um, illustration. I should go find that, it's somewhere. But yeah, I think it's so important that, um, that we really share these crazy ideas that we have about crafting and how they can be part of STEM and part of social emotional learning. And that brings us to Joy Labs. I love that we're doing this topic today. And I love that you, you like, like, it's like, okay, like social emotional learning. Well, like, can you have learning without people's emotions involved, without <clears throat> proximity to other people and how you're related to them? I actually had a mom call me three days ago, just a friend. And she said, oh, uh, I can't teach my son math. Like I need a different program or I need to, like maybe I need more patience or I'm not sure what's going on. And I was like, oh, like it has nothing to do with your son's ability to learn math. Like he's just frustrated and he, like he, he, he's not emotionally engaging with math because like he's been told, he's like had like my, little traumas and little like negative events around it. And it took her like a few days and she, she called me and she's like, oh man, like he really can learn math, but like, it really was all about like the way we engaged around it and his feelings around it. So I don't know if you can really separate them. So to say learning kind of does involve automatically the peers of the child or the adult or the beginner in the learning process. And it does involve how they feel and attach to it and where their mission in life, where they're driving towards. So all that is always involved. And so, as I think about Joy Labs today, um, you know, like you can say like, what are the biggest problems <clears throat> in the world today? And you could say, okay, it's nuclear proliferation or global warming, or it's like uh, social media despair, or, or maybe it's, uh, you know, Kurt Vonnegut said a long time ago that the biggest problem, modern problem is loneliness. And also you could say anxiety, like that might strike a chord with you. You or someone you know may have depression or anxiety. So um, what if, what is the platform by which we solve all of these problems? And you know, you can point to different things like policy or, or all kinds of stuff, but what about the artery that feeds all of our mindsets and forms the way we look at the world and empowers us as problem solvers 
Well, you could say that that's learning and you could say that what kind of damage are we doing to these arteries if we don't pay attention to the social emotional. So zooming in um, and practically, you know, Joy Labs is always trying to show people the world around them is changeable. Yourself is changeable, digital world with Game Bender, physical world with Makey Makey. And we really do have this common route where G and I were working at the same lab at Media Lab and we had advisors that were next to each other and we crossed over advisors a lot. So she worked with my advisor a lot. I worked with her advisor a lot. So we really come from the same like germ of this idea of this crafty, creative world. So I'm glad to be here. Hey, and I, I want to shoot back real quick to Natalie and Susan, because Natalie and you also have a connection that's totally separate <laughs> from the other, but I wanted to let them say who they are as what they do at Chibi because we, because I'm, I'm too, doing too many hats today. So Natalie, can you introduce yourself real quick and then tell us what you do at Chibitronics? Uh, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so um, let's see. I'm um, based in Austin, so I'm pretty close to Colleen. Um, and I know um, I went to grad school with G and with Jay as well um, and kind of got to see the beginnings of Chibitronics. I've been kind of following it ever since. Um, my personal mission is uh, I'm really interested in that intersection of kind of computer science, art and making um, and just kind of giving people access to um, the really, really interesting things you can do with computation, um, but still have it be crafty and homey and soft and gentle and all of that whole world of things. So um, I'm pretty excited to be working with Chibitronics um, and I uh, lately work on resources for educators. So how do we kind of support teachers in learning these tools and figuring out what the options are to um, share some new things with their students. Um, and I'm so sorry about the noise. I thought I locked the cats out, but apparently they got in. So this whole it's thing comes down at any moment. That's fun. And Susan is also part of the education team at Chibitronics. Oh, she's muted. Classic. <laughs> So happy to be there. Um, I fell in love with Chibitronics, uh, like I said in the chat, um, back in uh, 2000, I don't know, 16, 17, something like that, 16 probably. Um, I was a teacher and admin for a huge school system right around that surrounds Washington, DC. Um, and uh, my colleague and I had been presenting on all the cool things that we were doing for Chibitronics within at ISTE um, and other places, but ISTE, we happened to run into G and Natalie and I just, all I could do is genuflect <laughs> and they hired me. And so I am, uh, I'm, I'm an educator for Chibitronics and, and incredibly happy. And if you wanna see the um, dandelion video, the link is in the chat, it's awesome. Um, and, you, yeah. Um, is actually you get to talk more because I know we talked about this, uh, this main big idea of why we came together was that we wanted to share how we can combine SEL and maker projects. Um, and we had this great conversation about it, which formed this whole, whole webinar. So um, these images you're going to have to explain, Susan. Sure. Um, first one, I, you know, I was just kind of looking for some cool things that, that would, um, that I liked uh, that could help um, explain how uh, I see SEL in, in what we do in make, maker spaces or uh, maker places, I guess. Uh, the first one, it was adorable. Um, well, I don't know if it's adorable. It's, it's a beautiful idea that um, the world uses broken things. Um, I'm just gonna read it because I love it. It takes broken soil to produce a crop broken clouds to give rain, broken grains to give bread, broken bread to give strength. Um, and we all feel broken at times. So if we can, um, I don't know, share that with our kids. Um, and to me, that also means that we share our vulnerabilities with our kids and let them correct us at times so that they, um, they see that it's okay to be broken and they understand better that idea of broken uh, uh, bread to give strength. I think that's just wonderful. Um, I think you also it, talked a lot, a lot about how that, that we attend to the heart. And I wanted to get those three words out there, attend to the heart, because I thought that 
that's kind of also what framed this, this thing of being relate, like being relatable to your students and having an open heart and using compassion and teaching your students compassion as well. And I think, I think that um, the vulnerability part is doing that in a way it because you are opening up yourself your heart to them by letting them know that um you're not perfect by any way and that you feel um confident enough with them to show that you are um i don't know does that does that work colleen um i i, I um, yeah 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 um, yeah, and the, then the engineering song that you had up here. That's adorable. Um, we don't, I don't know that we, it, the whole thing doesn't work, but um, basically it, 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 it is showing that it's okay to make mistakes, that you fix things and it's okay. That's, that's part of it. And that um, collaboration and that the collaboration thing is from the heart. When we, when we, um, yeah, you all know that when we work together and when we learn to work together and that's a, that's a feat in of itself is learning to work together. Um, and it, it really does have to do with talking about how we care about one another and how important that is. Um, well, I think that was something that we all said is that sometimes when you're doing something new, you can feel really vulnerable and really fragile. And it's okay to feel that way. And sometimes we forget that we should share that experience with our students, right? We should share with them like, hey, I've never, and I think that's one reason that Chibitronics really was transformative for me and Makey Makey because I had no idea what I was doing. I had never made a circuit in my life, you know, and I got these little paper circuit notebooks and I got them out with my kids and we did them together and we failed together and they figured stuff out before me. And like, it was so successful. It was actually really much more successful with my students when I didn't know what I was talking about than I was when I did know what I was talking about. So I think sometimes bringing that back in and reminding yourself like, hey, if they're new to this, they need to understand what it's like to be new to making this kind of project. And so we have to kind of offer our kids different levels of support. Some of them are ready to share and, and some aren't, right? So. Um, I loved the idea of combining SEL with maker projects and using Rosie Revere Engineer because I think it's a book that everyone on this webinar has probably read or looked at, I hope. And if you haven't, go buy a copy today. Um, I'm not getting any sales money from Andrea Beatty, but <laughs> I love this book so much uh, because this little girl um you know, she's building stuff and people are making fun of her, right? And she's trying things and, and they're teasing her. So um, how did she, talking about how she felt when she made those inventions and, and using that to, to uh, you said you used that to teach circuits. So, oh, Susan's muted again. You know, when you're muted, you don't know you're muted. <laughs> I thought I was pushing the button, sorry, okay. Yeah. Um, the we did we uh, we read this we were doing maker things in the, in a library elementary school and so we experimented with a second grade group of kids this is a title one school um, we read Rosie Revere engineer to them and then we talked a little bit about how Rosie felt when she was feeling like they were making fun of her and and adults I think sometimes don't realize when they're being cute and um, ironic or even, um, yeah, we, yeah, cute and ironic that it hurts children's feelings. Um, and so we talked about how she was feeling and how at the end, the others supported her. And so while we were doing the hard part of learning how to turn the tape and, 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 making mistakes because we were going to make mistakes. The kids were all there about um, helping one another and talking about how to support one another. And it was just a totally awesome experience. I wish I could have videotaped it. Um, but if you, you know, it's, it's a, I, I don't know how old a group of kids or what grade level that would not work, but um, I'd love to try that more or here. If you all tried that with a, older group of kids. It was I awesome. Think you, 
you can read this book with older kids for sure. But I, I think just if you even have the focus of just the idea of reframing it is different because, you know, I, I read this book and had my kids build towers or inventions or whatever, but I never reframed it with support as the guiding theme for our class that day. So I think that's a, just such a, such a, like open so many doors for, for using SEL with maker projects. Yeah. Yep. And Fanny, tell us about yeah. this beautiful mural. Uh, so yeah, this was another idea of how we can integrate uh, that vulnerability and creativity. So how can use maker projects to inspire others? So for example, this is a poster or like a mural with a paper circuits using Chibitronics and each LED has an inspiring quote about empowerment. And it was displayed on the school walls uh, at the time in the school I worked at. So this activity can be just can be again done collaboratively and we can pick and choose different quotes that make sense to us or it could be the core values of the schools and things like that and we can then have this in our environment and it inspires us every day when we pass by and we can feel thankful it reaffirms our beliefs our intention and good feelings so it is a simple project where we can integrate the process and also a product that attends to the heart and we can go to the next one and talk oh, about sure. another idea that is gift making. It is super simple, but it's really powerful. So when we create something, we are generously crafting and creating something for others. It is simple. It is powerful. It expresses our gratitude, our creativity. And I think it's also the vibe, like we are using some products here, but we want, we don't, we are not in that cons consumer society. We are in the making, in the creation, in the, in the draft and craft. So we want to invest our time rather than our money. We want to invest our time in making something meaningful that em embraces compassion and it's, and can be given away to other people we love. And here's another example here. Yeah. And I love that. Um, I love the idea of sharing something with yourself with, with someone else. Natalie, tell us about the, um, it's just, I know it's a little hard to read, but we can sort of read it. It's was one buzz, two buzzes. So like, what is, what's happening in this um, B card? Yeah, so the, the little B has a little buzzing motor in it. Um, so when you press a button, you can get the little uh, motor to buzz. And this was a, a project where students made a set of cards. And so they had they basically were making a card for a friend where one card could talk to the other card. Um, and we left it really open other than that. Um, and this particular um, student came up with a communication system, so like a mini Morse code type of thing. but. Uh, three buzzes is I'm fine and four buzzes is I'm not so great. So already some SEL there just um, in there thinking about, okay, what, how would I want my card to connect to my friend's card? Yeah. I also, even when I see it, I think of like coming into school in the morning and like maybe just checking in with your teacher or even checking in throughout the day, like, how are you feeling right now? And you can just buzz once I'm here, you know, <laughs> like you buzz four buzzes like I'm not doing so great teacher like let me know you know I need I need a little bit of something um I love that card so the four c's are also really important and I I really oh I already shared the the SEL pdf that I had um but Fanny I want to know was maker mornings were you doing that when you were in India yes yeah yeah so when I worked in India, I designed this program uh, that we called Family Maker Morning, and it was based on the four C's, so creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. So once a month, what we did is we met on a Saturday morning with uh, whoever signed up, families and their children, and they could come to school and we would create something. So this promoted a sense of belonging, a community feel. And as you, I mean, I worked in an international school, so we had many parents who didn't speak English also, even the students. But this was a, such a great way to integrate new families and to communicate non-verbally. We could really truly express ourselves and share our experiences. So people would help one another. There was always, um, we, we would, try to make people really feel capable so we would scaffold it to the different age groups but also inclusive so we did have really small children and older ones it was a pk12 school and we engaged in quick prototyping there was always a choice factor to bring in the autonomy so that they, we could provide ways for the makers to create in ways that interested them 
rather than you know being told uh, to do it in a certain way. So, uh, so they could feel the value and engage in the action intentionally and volitionally, which is important in autonomy. <laughs> and so the process again was so important because uh, at the end we would always showcase each other's work. So this is an example, this video of a makey makey uh, morning where everybody was working in different stations, creating different instruments. And at the end, we created this video just to share it uh, well, back with Saturday, creators and with the, on social media beyond. So this is just a, a cool example of how you can really integrate uh, process, uh, social emotional learning, and great making skills. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to put that link in there. But first in chat, if everyone in fact, I'll wait because if I put it in right now and you all start talking, then it's going to be a mess. So in the chat, I want you to everyone who's here with us today to answer how we can support others. What are how can we um, discuss how uh, how we help others who have different needs for different levels of support? So what are some ways we can support our students or teach this idea of support to students? If everyone can answer that and I'll give us a minute. Um, oh, and we. We also need to type down, Fanny, while people are typing their answer, what were the four C's again? Oh, Susan already um, wrote it. <laughs> but let's, we should say them again. Critical, Can, yeah, well, uh, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and creativity. But sometimes you have other, other C's, you have citizenship. So it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I mean, it mattered for me for my context, but you could create it with other values as well. These are the four I used, and I know there are different other ways yeah. to, to do it. But, but I think transdisciplinary skills, basically. Yeah, those three, those three that are really important to me are the communication, creativity, and collaboration. I mean, com com computational thinking is important too. Uh, yeah. Character, Mina's saying character and caring, yeah, yeah, yeah. I also think is important. Um, the new ones, yeah. And I love that our first thought here is to pause and listen and inquire rather than provide the solution. And I think most teachers who've been making with students are at this point where they know this is what we're supposed to do, right? To pause and listen and ask rather than give a solution. Um, but it always brings me back to, um, I had someone visiting my library and I was, I had kids working on invention literacy projects um, where they're creating inventions and they were trying to make something that I knew they were not going to be successful at. Like I knew it. I knew there was no way. They were trying to take open a laptop and reuse the microphone or something, which maybe they could do if we had more time, but we were just in the time we had. But I still let them do it and figure it out themselves and then go find the little bits and use the little bits microphone. Like I, I and that teacher said, wow, watching you do that, like I just always, I would have helped them and I would have told them what to do. But we're not really making very resilient learners when we do that. Right, like if they can't try and succeed, then then you know what are we doing for them? Smile more, talk less, Regina. That's a great. That really is a great like point. Talk less and smile more. Wait, is that Hamilton? <laughs> that was Hamilton. You you Hamiltoned me, Regina. Uh, pair up with someone who just got it. That's that's one we always have the just in. Uh, just in time learning, right? Where you learned something and you have them uh, do that, like pair up right, right then rather rather than low ability and high ability. I like that. Because especially when you just learn it, you're ready to like roll over, right? You're like also Probably. a better teacher when you just learn something because you know exactly what that barrier looks like. Right, um, totally. Problem finding as a way to anticipate problem solving. I think, Jay, you should talk about problem finding. Well, I guess a lot of times people pose, um, you know, everything as what's the problem, like especially in science research or in academic research or something. And I think that there's a flip side to that, which is like, what would be wonderful? And like, that's another way to pose what is the problem. And also, as we look for, um, like, as we look for, answers to questions like a lot of times posing the question is the hardest part and like I like how Frere talks about a pedagogy of questions and that means a pedagogy of the teacher posing questions or the facilitator pos posing questions as well as students and learners posing questions and 
filling the pedagogy with more questions because there's kind of a imbalance. Um, it's not that it should be all questions, but questions are underrepresented in lots of pedagogy. So you can't go wrong by throwing more in. Um, and just like problem finding as kind of the fundamental act, like in the scientific process, there's not a lot of talk about how one finds the original question or the original problem. So there's this invisible thing that happens where some of the best scientists that have the biggest breakthroughs spend a lot of time and it's not discussed on, on coming up with a big problem, not a big answer, not even a big idea, but like, oh, what is, where do we want to spend our effort? So it's big. I think you also talked about like looking at a character in a book and talking about how did that character come upon that problem, even showing how they found a problem. Like you could do, you could do that with the what to do with an idea, right? That book, what to do with an idea. Oh, yeah. It's a really good book for teaching about problem finding, I would think. Um, also in the chat, Katie said, honor curiosity and questions with time and engagement, which I thought was a really um, beautiful thought, which I think we have as our next slide about building in that time for support. So even learning to stop and ask, what kind of help do we need? Like sometimes we have to do that out loud. And um, I think that was, that's that's very useful, right? To, to know, oh, how do I do this? How can I do this? And I told you guys that when I make my videos for Makey Makey, a lot of times I'll have mistakes. And rather than edit those mistakes out, they're very small problems, they're not big, but like, Oh, why isn't this working? Oh, because I didn't hit the green flag yet in Scratch. And so sometimes just mo modeling that like little problem and fixing it is is enough to show kids like you've done something, right? Like you, you, you need some help. All right. Um, what was an emotion you have had during making if everyone can answer during chat? Oh, I know what I'm going to write. Can anyone guess what I'm going to write? This is fun. I don't think I've ever done a, what are the five chairs? Oh, um, Janice Conger said she did a project with uh, five chairs to teach empathy where each student created a chair to, for specific client needs, which actually goes with our last webinar really well. Um, and maybe if Janice can find us a link for that. I know I saw a bear chair project once, which I think was um, another great, younger elementary ed teacher. Frustration. Oh, Regina and I are frustration sisters. <laughs> I typed frustration is my emotion for making. G, tell us one of your feelings you've had during making, when you're making something. Relief, Athena, that's a good one. Surprise. G, can you talk about the these illustrations from K5? Because I, I think you did these in the Love to Code um, book on purpose, right? Uh, yeah, I, um, I I kind of set that uh, the starting back. So K5 is the illustrator for the Love to Code um, uh, book series, and we kind of created the it's an activity book, but we intentionally created characters because. Um, at, at least for all of us here, I think learning something is not just learning, like put this here, this is how this works. It's also uh, the process of like learning how to learn with yourself and other people. And so we wanted to be able to model that. And that's why we decided to add the characters in. Um, I share a little bit more uh, example stories, I guess, of, of Fern. Um, do we want to do that or do we want to talk? Yeah, I'll, sw I'll switch to the next one. I just, I, I really like, I can see like myself and Fern yeah, with exactly. the cool electronics kit and all the stuff and yeah. just being like what? <laughs> exactly um so uh I think maybe the next oh. one oh, oh we'll, we'll go back to it yeah it, it must be in another another spot we'll come yeah. back to it but um I think yeah we'll go ahead and talk about building in time for mistakes and learning and support but then we'll we will come back to it because I know it's it's in there, but we, we just put that in there because we love those emotions. So just know every time you see those characters, they're all very purposely, um, they're purposely made. And we'll talk about the flower guy too. Yes. So 
Yeah. How, so talking about how we can model a fail forward attitude, Fanny did this in her major yeah. morning. I think we, we also did this within our slides. Like you made sure we just like scrambled all the slides. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> to have strong emotions. Uh, <laughs> no, this is, this is great. I love those uh, characters as well. Uh, this is just uh, some ideas of how you can also model failing forward. So there was an example in one of those family maker mornings I was talking about where we actually failed, but we failed together, you know, <laughs> there was a sort of good feelings of togetherness in this. But for uh, the person organizing it, it can be quite distressing, you know. So we were making uh, some, some, some construction and we couldn't actually be successful. But then we thought with the person, uh, with my coworker uh, at the time, we thought, okay, let's send a, a video back to our community to say that we failed and, and it's okay to fail and it's all about the process. So we kind of acknowledge failing forward moments and that we were committed to, uh, to solving the issue and being resilient. So there was, we made a little video, but it was really context specific. But it's just an idea that we should also, again, be vulnerable and share back and model this. Uh, of course, the, the, the point is not to make mistake, but is to reflect on the mistakes. So to kind of model that, that part. Um, another aspect was to set the tone for the safe social and emotional environment. So I call myself, I tell my students, especially in the beginning of the year, that I'm a serial mistake maker and they have to find the mistakes I made as well. And I'm going to intentionally make mistakes and sometimes unintentionally. And I want to be, you know, to be able to share it with, with anyone so that we can really celebrate that process. And another point was uh, validating feelings that we all discussed in the group and we thought how important it is to acknowledge how we feel before we move forward. And finally, I think Colin, you have shared it, but it is uh, so important to do it. Uh, again, you do it in your tutorial. And uh, this I think is a great idea to show uh, your vulnerability and to also sh uh, share some misconceptions that the people who are watching could have and how we can support them in actually conceptualizing the, the learning and having a more sustainable learning. So I think it's, it's a great idea. <laughs> you know, what's really great is that you, everything you said actually points back to what Dinia said in the chat. She said that she teaches her students there is an us in the word frustration, but we are a team and we'll work it out one step at a time. And I thought that yep. is like a totally magical idea. Um, Bridget also said she shares uh, what kids share their work mid process to get design ideas from others, which I think is a great thing to be doing. But that also helps them problem solve ideas they're stuck on and it helps them make their projects even better. And sometimes they just get a, a idea sparked from one another. So I think that openly sharing through the design process and while making is really important. I think that's something magical about our companies that we have no problem calling Chibi and talking to them about things and they have no problem calling us. Um, not all companies do that. <laughs> so so that, that that's something different. Um, group virtual problem solving and think aloud. So I think that's, um, that was something we were talking about because uh, when I started teaching, I taught as an English language arts teacher. And um, oh gosh, that was like, how many years ago now? Okay, sorry, my brain just did that. But think alouds were mind blowing for me because I have always been a good reader. And here I came in taught teaching sixth grade and I'm teaching kids who cannot read um, I had a lot of ESL students, English as a second language learner students, and um, many of them were um, on first or second grade reading level. Actually, now that I know more about elementary, they were probably on kindergarten level reading in sixth grade. Um, and modeling the process of thinking aloud, what you're doing when you're reading was just like mind blowing to me because they didn't do those things. They didn't think those things. So I like bringing that into the, it actually ties right back to what um, Bridget said, um, where sharing those ideas together really helps um, have like kind of a group problem solve. So I guess that's, that's uh, I think Jay, you talked about this too, where coming to find out how someone came to a certain solution. I don't know if you were talking about real scientists or I just remember you having this this huge conversation with us about how like let's say like Thomas Edison, how did he come up with that, you know? 
Yeah. Um, it's really nice. There's so many invisible parts to the learning process and, um, and some of them aren't obvious. And so the more you can make them visible and discussable and real, um, the more we can understand our own learning process. Like, like in, in the comments, Bridget was saying that she has people graph their emotions over time. I've never heard of that, but that's an invisible part of your experience learning that if you draw a picture of it, it's no longer invisible. But the way that I usually, like the most powerful experience I had around that Colleen was um, in an Eleanor Duckworth class where she would have us solve problems, but physically. So a math problem, but we'd use M&Ms or beans or paper clips or something to represent the parts of the problem. And we'd move them around. And then after we would draw our solutions on the chalkboard, but we just draw the beginning, first line, second line, third line of the solution. And then people would say, oh, how do you think this, she would ask us, how do you think this person is gonna continue? Someone would say, I think they're gonna take this path to solving it. Oh, I think they're gonna take this path to solving it. And we didn't discuss just how the problem is solved. We discussed how each person approached the problem and what their path to the solution was. And what you realize is that there's so many different ways of thinking about the same problem and that each path makes sense, even when it leads to the wrong answer. Like sometimes so you, someone didn't take a path that leads to the right mathematical answer, but you're like, oh, I see why they took that path and I see where they went wrong. That whole process of reifying each step of the learning <clears throat> and, and really like breaking down failure, like we're talking about failure before, break it down into its subcomponents. Well, what's failure when you don't get the right answer at the end? How does that happen? Well, maybe that happens because along the way, you didn't allow yourself to see when you're bumping into a dead end. So what is that? That's like a momentary failure. So like, if you allow momentary failure, then you won't have endpoint failure. So like breaking these things down and seeing how the actual mechanics, it's like, look, this field of learning is like, arguably only 200 years old. Like, let's get into this. Let's reinvent it. You know, Dania had, a, I'm probably saying your name wrong. It's but I'm going to call her Dania for now. And I apologize. She can tell me how to say it in chat. But she said, we, they have a, how many fails can we make in one hour? And then they stand on their chairs and celebrate their fail, fail astic, how fail astic they are. And they chart their fails too. So not just charting emotions, but charting fails. Um, and I think that's really awesome. She's, she loves mistakes and fails. Fanny, this is what we did in another uh, webinar, which I actually think does mean joy uh, in sign language. We have to come up with all these hand terms when we're like pumping each other on in, in a in a webinar. Um, so, gee, now we have we can come back to K5's beautiful illustrations about community support, and we can see Fernie the frog um, here. Fernie likes to make art and take photos and dance and loves to create. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks. Um, so yeah, our our kind of main character, and we're hoping like maybe this is someone that the reader can identify with. Is this very excited frog named Fern? And basically, she has an experience that I think many of us had, which is she saw her friends make something cool, and she's like, okay, I want to do that too. And so she goes to the you know store and the library and gets all these books, and she's like feeling great. But then. The next slide, please. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I was reading how to pronounce. Diane, I think it's Diana. I think I just really messed her name up. <laughs> Um, so, you know, Fern gets all the stuff, but then you kind of have that moment that most of us have had, which is like, there's parts everywhere and you're looking at the instructions and you're like, oh shoot, maybe this isn't for me. But um, we then bring it back to, in the next part, um, as Fern's friend, Sammy. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, Go sorry, back. I went too far. You said next part. I thought it was this. Yeah, no, no, sorry. We're, we are learning as, as in, you know, real time. We're failing. Slides. Oh, yeah. We forgot <laughs> yeah, to tell yeah. everyone. I'll we purposely, huh? We're purposely failing on purpose throughout the webinar. <laughs> Fanny and I had set that up beforehand. We just forgot to tell everyone. Exactly. Go ahead. How <laughs> say next slide. That's when you do the next slide. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 You, um, so basically, uh, you know, her, her Fern's friend, Sammy sees, you know, her friend's frustration is like, oh, you know, learning this stuff is not easy. It truly isn't, but it can be fun and you don't have to do it by yourself. And then Fern's like, okay, let's try it together. And then the whole rest of the book is every chat, every new concept, a new friend of Fern's comes and introduces. And so, so that's how the whole activity book is framed around learning from friends, um, because it's kind of how 
it worked for us in real life, I think. Um, so that was one story. Uh, and then the next slide, <laughs> next story that I wanted to share, we were talking about George, this angry flower, because like the relationships are not simple. And this is also kind of like, it, it like, you know, brings back some memories, but basically George is this character who kind of like is a know-it-all and he kind of goes to the characters and it's like, oh, I'll bet you don't even know how to do this. And so that's wh where he is at the beginning of the story. And, and this is, you know, teaching about lights because light sensing, because George is a flower. So next slide. Um, but what happens is uh, because George is very knowledgeable, he ends up teaching the characters, okay, this is how you do it. And he, at first he's not very, you know, he's not the kindest. He's like, oh, you're not bad for a beginner, but they keep on going and they persist. And by the end, you can see they're all kind of hanging out together, um, making stuff together. And then next slide. Um, by the end, the, the character's like, oh, well, thanks for showing all that stuff to us. You know, I guess we'll be going now. And then George is like, oh, like, you know, you guys don't have to leave so soon. And, and then George is like, maybe we can keep hanging out. And they're like, okay. And then they keep hanging out and, and playing. And basically what happens is George was kind of a bully because he didn't know how to make friends. But through teaching the other characters, you know, he started interacting. And then by the end, he's much nicer. And he doesn't have to be a bully anymore because he realized, you know, everyone can just be nice and, you know, learn and play together. And so this is kind of an experience that it's, it's a more complex experience than simply let's collaborate, but it's also something a lot of us have experienced in real life. And so we want to be able to kind of model these experiences as well. So that, Did that's you, what I wanted to share. Does anyone on your team have their love to code book like readily available because we haven't really showed the the viewers what it does and it's so magical because and you can actually see the love to code book inside the illustration but you as you turn the pages you're able G has made this clippable microcontroller and you're actually able to move it from page to page and program different things and it's so cool uh Susan's gonna go get one I think so we'll yeah. we'll come back um, to, uh, you can also like our entire book is you can download it as a PDF. So I think there's a link there on the slide. Yeah, and I put it in the chat already. Oh, yeah. asked, and I already and put I, it in the chat. I put one in for templates and downloads because uh, every yeah, th yeah, that'll take you directly to that. Um, I know that my love to code book is like right over there, but like in a drawer, but I'm not going to go get it right this second. Um, but we'll hopefully one of us will get it out because it's really cool. You can lay it on conductive tape. Um, I'm doing that because like you have your conductive tape and it, it just lays right on top. And it's just such kind of like a magical prototyping tool. And um, I think that's really cool. I'm not going to talk too long about this because we're running out of time. Uh, but this is a really fun project and I'll share the link. Uh, it's from one of our Making Making Ambassadors in España. She's in Spain and um, it's Color Your Emotions from Elena Vircher, this color monster book. I actually read with my children last spring, right in the beginning of all of us being stuck at home. Um, it's a really great book to talk about emotions and what you're doing. And so in this project, uh, Elena had her students all paint their own color monster. And then in Scratch, they are reading their voices and um, expressing their emotions. So a really direct SEO project, right? Just making it exactly um, for another kid. And then Fanny, do you want to talk about your French Yeah, book? it's a similar, like technically it's similar, like here it were, uh, it was students were recording their voice for a French project where we were con comparing and contrasting the vowel sounds in French um, uh, 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 in comparison to our mother tongue. And so we recorded different things and then we just, you know, um, connected our uh, with Scratch and Makey Makey onto this actual book, which we then presented in an assembly and did this video to share it back. So it was another opportunity again to collaborate and use technology in a low tech manner, but in a really meaningful way that, you know, um, am amplified students' voice really. Yeah. And this last project, is this the last project that we're going to share? And then I'm going to uh, try to share that book link out because we have some really good books to talk about. Um, well, the last thing we were talking about was making learning visible, which is something we've been talking about this whole time, showing our problem solving and showing our problem finding 
all of this is making learning visible and making it available for all kids. So I just finished the last, and I can't believe I didn't promote this at the very beginning of the webinar, uh, but the last of our at-home classes. Um, I've created 16 online classes for your students to take from home or at school or wherever they are. Uh, they're student facing. They're all on the web page now, and this is the very last one. And I'm actually working now on the curriculum guide side for all you teachers. Um, so you can in institute it in your classes um, without just handing it over to them. But you know, feel free to hand it over to them because they're pretty good at it. This is actually a project I did last year, um, around this time last year, and it is the invention challenge. And I think, wait, I already shared it. So I had this group of fifth grade students design math and literacy games for kindergarten students. And this is a really, really amazing way to tie in social emotional learning because now we're bringing in the design cycle. We're bringing in design thinking and we're actually making something for someone else. Um, and uh, I would suggest if you do this, you can do, if your kids are new to Makey Makey, kindergarten makes it really simple for math and literacy. I think that every age group you change can make uh, make for more uh, complicated projects on the Makey Makey side or more easy, easy projects. But we had them interview the teacher, the kindergarten teacher to learn how kindergartners learn. So you can see on the, maybe you can see the picture's really small, but when what they learned when they went into the classroom was that they couldn't give kids math equations because they're only, you know, just knowing what a number is, right? And just knowing what some letters are. So uh, on this right side picture, you can kind of see in scratch how A, E, I, O, and U are orange. That's because they learned that um, kindergarten teachers were teaching the difference between vowels and consonants, and they had those colors different. And then they also learned that kindergartners love to touch things, so they made all the projects very sensory. So they wrapped pipe cleaners around the hard brass buttons and things like that. Um, so, and then on the, this left one is actually a really fun project where the kid, he, he'd had them recognize colors and blend colors. So that was his project. Uh, so it's really a, a very fun challenge. And I think we're already out of time. So I'm gonna stop going too far into it, but you can go to the guide and it actually shows you the design thinking process. Um, make sure that your kids are actually always user testing. So that's gonna be a little complicated now with COVID if you can't go in person to do those things, but even still you can create something for someone us. An, a younger sibling, you can create something for someone else and, you know, see how they're, they can do the scratch side of it. Um, but yeah, so the very, oh, and then we also have the uh, Chibitronics as a similar project. Did, who wanted, who was talking about this? I, I, I'll just t tell you quickly, this is, um, this is fifth graders um, teaching love to code ideas with go to the next let's see is sure. there one more slide no nope, just that. okay um they're they're teaching eighth graders in chicago so this is from um uh glendale maryland near university of maryland um kids teaching eighth graders and um so this is making learning visible but it's also um I don't know. There's a whole lot of good stuff with this, but I know we're out of time. So um, <laughs> we are kind of out of time. That's OK. Well, we'll go ahead and let you guys uh, to end this. You can you can write some lists, some books of your of your favorite books with diverse characters. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can get these links because my other way I was sharing uh, has broken on me. But uh, I went ahead and uh, Natalie, tell us where most of the books came from because I add, I supplemented to this list. I think it was your, an Oakland librarian who started this list and I added to it. Yeah, a, a friend of mine is a librarian in Oakland um, and I asked her for a list of books that were around making and steam and diverse characters. And so the ones with explanations were from her. Um, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, I actually, I added a whole bunch and I added explanations. So we have books from, um, I added some books like Vicki Fang wrote these I Can Code series that are for babies that are pretty awesome. And she also wrote Layla in the Box, which is like my new favorite series that I'm having my first grader read um, because they use the design cycle. So that's pretty awesome to see. Um, and the Jada Jones series, I added that one. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of really great books in here. And then Fanny has another book list. Um, so I'll share that with you guys. And 
before we go, Fanny, some people were asking about your course again. Do you want to give one last explanation about what your course involves? Yeah, so the course starts on Sunday and it's about co-constructing healthy learning ecosystems. So it's really all about how we can incorporate wellness and deep learning. And this is not like any other online course, obviously, <laughs> because this is really about actually a slowing down. So, you know, it's a good time if we, we are all having so many PDs right now, PD online. So this is more about slowing down and really being aware you have a journal where you can, you know, write down your thoughts and things like that. And so if you're interested, don't hesitate to contact me because who knows, maybe I can give you a discount. <laughs> I'm, I would really love to have a few more PK-12 teachers uh, to complement the group. We already have a good group. Uh, we also have different stakeholders in the course. So it's a multi-stakeholder. It's interesting. We have a board member, we have parents, we have teachers. So it should be pretty interesting. Awesome. And Thanks. then everybody, thanks for coming. And again, if you want to know more about Chibitronics or Makey Makey and you want to spend three days with me and Tom or three days with Susan and Natalie, um, go apply for the emphasis. It's virtually free because they're going to give you a um, scholarship and then you have to fundraise for the last $300. Um, but pretty much you're probably going to not have to pay anything and you get really great PD. But yes, we are all doing a lot of PD right now. So we appreciate you teachers for everything you're doing. Um, I read, uh, I just like got a little bit caught up in the end there that it's hard with parents home because they want to help students. Um, I have my own kid virtual learning. I totally understand that. I try, I try to, and I even know that I shouldn't be doing it, <laughs> but um, maybe a gentle reminder is sometimes all that's needed. Um, thanks everybody for joining us for this, this conversation around social emotional learning. It was really wonderful to be with you today. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. You. This is the part where I pause the recording and I say goodbye, but I haven't hit end. So everybody, I'm going to close it down for you on this. So I'm still reading through all this chat. Yes. Goodbye. Hearts. Yay.